I'm out of high school. And somebody drives one of these. Getting horrible flashbacks. It was terrible at school. Pretty sure I'm not allowed to film in here, but. I mean, you've all seen what a high school looks like. It's death. Going on a science trip on a boat in the middle of Baltimore. There's the Trade Center. There's the aquarium. There's some high school kids. Boat time. I don't remember the last time I've been on a boat. I should plan a aquarium trip soon. What is What is that? What are they doing there? I'm going to need to come back and explore that. This is the Baltimore National Aquarium. One of the biggest national aquariums, we'll say in the world. Don't know if that's true or not, but now it is. I'll do that too. Thank you. For the young ones, they got different sizes. Just a beautiful Baltimore day. So, so pretty. And if something happens, somebody could be doing speed us pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. All right, sound good? Feel safe? Mm -hmm. okay. Our goal for this first part is going to be to finish the sentence, Baltimore Harbor is what? What is Baltimore Harbor? Go ahead. Polluted. Polluted. Oh, good job, Lily. <laughs> <laughs> and you all don't need to worry about hurting our feelings. It is okay to have negative things on your mind about Baltimore Harbor. That is a-okay. Okay. The hope is that through those investigations, we'll learn more about these things on the top. Maybe we'll have more context, maybe we'll have data, maybe we might even change our mind about some of the things. How do people affect the health of Baltimore Harbor? Now if we're going to be examining the health, I want us to have a starting off point. So before we do any investigations, just based off what you already know and what you've seen since you got here, maybe a half hour ago, how healthy do you think Baltimore Harbor is? I want you to show me on your thumbs. If your thumb is totally up, happy hunky-dory. Your thumb is totally down, dead, dirty ditch. If your thumb is in the middle, about halfway between those. And you can go middle up, middle down. You don't have to be directly middle. Show me on your thumbs. All right, remember where your thumb is. I want to see if that thumb changes based on the information we're able to gather today. So, if we're finding birds, should we put them here? Should we put them here? No. We should put them up here. Awesome. We have those markers there. Uh, you guys can just come up and write down the name of the species of bird if you identify it. And since we're... Yeah. There's a chance that some of the water 
floating past us? Was at some point a raindrop on your roof? I'm learning a lot about the ocean. The ocean. Look at that. When you get your test, you will have two laminated sheets with it. One of them is our information sheet. It'll tell you a little bit more about what the thing you're testing about oh, is. Just until it disappears and count the marks to measure from the surface of the water to the disk. Remember? 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 I would also like you to come over after you've recorded our numbers for our actual data recording. Add a visual representation of what the data that you found um, would actually look like to the health of this bay and change the bay however you think your findings would actually change the bay. This is Anything super surprising? What you got? The pH was surprising. I thought it would be a lot. I thought it would be a lot lower. I thought it'd be more acidic. Um, if a factory is directly dumping a whole bunch of extra stuff into the water, um, there's agencies, government agencies that will will go after them. Um, so yeah, it's the pH, not a indicator of bad health today. Okay, so phosphates and nitrates, they're nutrients. Mm -hmm. Are they themselves visible when added to water? Do they have a color themselves or do we need to use chemicals to make the, cap the uh, levels of nutrients show up? Yeah, we had to add something to change the color. Do we see algae in this water? You don't see like individual bits of algae, right? Mm -hmm. But what color is that water? Green. Green. <coughs> Why? Because of algae. Yeah, we don't see the individual algaes. It's not one big solid mat of algae in the water, but there is a very high uh, level of algae in this water because our nutrients generally are very high. Bacteria breaks it down, uses up the oxygen. What do we find for our oxygen levels today? Yeah. Yeah, I would call that an oxic an absence of oxygen. If we have a whole bunch of algae up here at the surface where we did a measurement, doing photosynthesis, what's going to happen to uh, the level of oxygen in the water? It's going to be real high, and then that algae just continues to die, sinks down, bacteria breaks it down, uses up the oxygen down low. What will we do to remove that surface algae? The goals of the Bay Foundation right now increase the amount of trees along rivers all throughout the watershed to reduce the speed of runoff um, and trap sediments and nutrients flowing off of the land before it gets into the rivers, creeks, and streams that lead down here to the bay. Yeah, we can do that. Installing filtration on land does great stuff. You were also mentioning better farming practices. Um, yeah, that's already happening. Farmers are, through use of technology and like mapping their fields better, are more able to use just the proper amount of fertilizer, which is a big bit bonus to them as they have to pay for all of those uh, nutrients that they're putting on their fields. And they don't want to pay for nutrients that they're going to put onto the fields to then just go into the stream because that's just throwing money away. Mm -hmm. So yeah, farmers, they are on board with trying to reduce the amount of runoff from their fields because the runoff is their fields and they understand that. Cool. Um, also, what is that pile of stuff that we put down there on the bottom? Oysters. Oysters, all right. Oysters. Interesting. Another great thing that could help out um, with that mat of algae up there. How?
There's the ultimate abandoned exploration spot, right? Urban exploring to the extreme. Oh, Dan Bell and I are gonna get in there. Just wait. Spread out some. Spread out. or what watermen call a soak. And that round shaped apron right there allows her to hold on to eggs. So like I can't just open this with my hands, but using uh, tools like the higher primate that I am, I can use a knife right in at the hinge there. With a twist, uh, you can pop the umbo where the two shells come open. And yeah, it's called shucking. Do you like textures? Like you want to touch it? Yeah, it's very yummy. You do like lemon juice or we put it on the Yeah. Is it crunchy? What do you think? Just crunchy. Yeah, oysters. I gotta, I gotta get on that island. What do they eat? Uh, algae. They eat algae. Poop. Would you like to see how yes. they eat algae? And the water will flow across their gills. These like fanny frilly bits right there. Which is algae. They want to eat the algae. Yes. <laughs> and then all of that other stuff. What do you think they do with it? Uh, they filter uh, what they don't want to eat and what they want to eat using yeah. their gills. Yeah. Like. Oh, we <laughs> you want to pick the fish that you are interested in picking up. You are going to gently persuade it towards the side of the bucket and then scoop up underneath with that cupped hand. learned a lot about the harbor today on this educational adventure. Yeah, the harbor's gross, but it's not as bad as we thought. So, we're doing it. We're fixing it. More oysters, that's what we need. Support the oysters.